Sherry Blokoff is a graphic designer, artist, and teacher who loves watercolor. There are plenty of things that make Sherry amazing, but one of my favorites is that she's been drawing every single day since October 2011. Yep, that's right, nine years this month. And she will teach with us at Etcher Lab, but more on that at the end of this episode. You can find more of Sherry's work at sherryblockoff.com. But for now, please join us as we talk about art as therapy, especially during the hard times we're facing now. How you can draw every single day, tips on connecting with other artists, and why live references beat any photos anytime. Want to be part of the show? Then send in your questions or topics you'd like to see covered to our email at hello at etcherlab.com. If you send us an audio recording, we might include it in the episode. Hi, I'm Manya, and this is Make More Art, a podcast by Etcher, meant to inspire you to keep on creating. Now let's hear from our guest. Uh, Sherry, I would love to know more of your uh, past. So I know you're a graphic designer and you teach yes. uh, watercolor lessons and you're part of the Etcher, the, the Etcher, the, <laughs> the, the Urban Sketchers and there's a lot going on. But when did art become a thing for you? When did that all start? Well, I was always one of those kids who drew. So I, I drew from, you know, from when I was very small. Uh, and when I was about uh, 12, I started painting in watercolor. I had a, there was a, a teacher in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. an older gentleman who would have classes in his house. And um, I don't know, my, I guess my parents thought it was a good idea that I should go there and learn from this man. And so I went and I fell in love with watercolor from a very early age. Aww. And uh, so I, I painted kind of, you know, it was a little hobby. And then mm -hmm. when I was uh, when I was 18, um, I discovered um, a, a, again another friend of my parents said I think Sherry would like this teacher in the states. He his name is Edgar Whitney, and he was he was in his late 80s, but he taught a lot of watercolor teachers and a lot of watercolorists in the states. So every, he lived in New York, but every summer he would teach in uh, Kennebunkport in Maine. And so I went and I studied with him for, for several summers. And uh, there would be, you know, maybe 40 students and we would go out painting every day and he would give a demonstration in the morning and a critique in the afternoon. And what made him unique wasn't just that he painted in watercolor, but he had a very much a design approach to painting. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was studying graphic design in university. So these two things meshed together, the idea that, um, you know, creating a painting was about using the principles and elements of design, mm -hmm. rhythm and balance and unity and all of those things. So his approach made a lot of sense to me, and I, I still... I still use that approach of designing a painting the same way I would design a page in graphic design. So that's where I truly fell in love with watercolor. Interesting that you say that. I completely relate to what you're saying because um, when I went to university, I also studied uh, design. It was communication design, so graphic design, mm -hmm. editorial, website design. And after I graduated and I started working with, at the time, my boyfriend, now he's my husband, we started our own company, our software, because it's software developer, so our software and design company. And we were doing software, like coding websites and such, because that's what we could sell. But our, our hearts remained with video games. He loved to code for games. And ah and I missed doing art. So because of that, I started learning digital painting. And the first lesson I had, or actually the first course I had, the approach was also very composition focused. And that made so much sense to me because of all the graphic design stuff that I had studied just like you, yeah. so I can totally yeah. relate. And yeah. uh, that's also how I started the art category. And then like watercolor for me only came three years ago, if I'm not mistaken, three or four. 
uh, but it's interesting because of all the digital stuff I did and everything that I learned up to today. So when I grabbed watercolors, I simplified so much of my approach to be just basic shapes and composition that yes. is so much related to graphic design. That yes, it's like, it's amazing exactly. how everything that we love kind of... It fits gets... together. It does. It fits together, exactly. So I see a lot and, of myself uh, in what you're saying. So cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I painted for many years, um, and I also worked as a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I met my husband in advertising, so same as you, same kind of field, but he's a writer. Oh, so wow. We, yeah, so we worked together. He was the copywriter, and I was the art director in an advertising agency. And eventually, we started our own business, and I continued to paint. But then eventually, after that, we had kids, so that's when I stopped painting. I just and... had one. I just had one. Okay. <laughs> I'm loving this conversation. <laughs> and I'm like, That's I've been great. wanting to do this. Like, we just changed the website today for Etcher. And yeah. uh, we're going to have uh, everybody's from the team, everybody faces instead of being our photos. We want to have a drawing of each one. And I volunteered to do it. And I've been dying to do it, but. I haven't done it. That's great. Kids. So I'm like, oh, so that's what happened to you. So this is my life yes. right now. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so then I stopped for I stopped drawing and painting for many, many years, except for sometimes I would keep a little sketchbook. Um, but uh, my kids are in their 20s now, but they were competitive swimmers, which takes up a lot of time. So oh, wow. yeah, so I was always, you know, working at home and then driving we always had our business in the house and then driving them to the pool and so I didn't paint for many years but then when they got old enough that I could go back to it then I said okay I got it I gotta I gotta you know get back into drawing at least mm -hmm. so I started so I got a sketchbook and um I I also said okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do a blog at the same time so my blog is gonna force me to post a sketch every day Cool. So that's what I, I did. I started in 2011 and I started sketching every day and I sketched e almost every day. I sketched every day for three years. So over a thousand sketches. How? Uh, how, how did you do that magic? <laughs> Tell me the secret. Well, the secret is just making it a priority first instead of putting it at the end of the day. So if I was at this time, I was already teaching graphic design. So I, I taught graphic design. After working at home for many years, I, I went back and I, I, uh, I applied to be a teacher. So I taught for 10 or 12 years in a college. So I would just take my sketchbook with me and on the way to work, I would draw. I would leave a little early or on the way home or I would draw at lunchtime or draw my students. or So I just made it a priority every single day. And, uh, and eventually, well, eventually quite near in the beginning, I, I, uh, I found Urban Sketchers. And, uh, that, that was kind of how I, uh, you know, I, I got more followers in my blog and I began to teach at Urban Sketchers at the symposia as well. So, um, but I, I would say that, you know, drawing every day is really, I think the most important thing in my life. Wow. Besides Three my years. family and all that, but I mean, about, in my art, in my yeah. art life. Yeah. And yeah. your art. So what about when you're sick? I, I mean, you uh, have been sick so far, and right in three years, there there have to be days that you just woke up and I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do it. Well, if I go back in my blog, I see that. Uh, well, I, first, I don't get sick that often. I'm a pretty healthy person, but there was one day when I, when one week when I did something bad to my back, Ooh. and my husband and I and I couldn't get up out of bed. I, I I had a pulled something in my back, but my husband brought me my 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 uh, sketchbook, so I sketched from bed. Uh, <laughs> Oh. No, but I mean, no, uh, but I mean, uh, I mean, if we want to talk about real serious stuff, uh, during during you know in the past uh, four years, I've lost both of my parents. I'm my sorry. mother had dementia. Uh, my father had a, a heart attack and died. Um, and I've so I I had my sketchbook with me in those times too. And I, I sketched my father when he was in the hospital. And you know, they're not sketches that I've posted. Yeah, but. Um, but their sketch there it's just a you know sketching is like a, can be like meditation or can be like therapy so i've had my sketchbook with me in the good times and also in the bad times wow thank you for sharing yeah. that that's that's quite something yeah 
when did uh, the Urban Sketchers come in the picture? <laughs> Uh, well, in 2011, when I right not too long after I started my blog, um, I found Urban Sketchers online, and I was mm -hmm. so excited because you know in my early days when I was painting, um, the sketch was just uh, the plan for a painting. It wasn't an it wasn't an end product, right? The sketch was just a little value sketch, and then you did the painting. And I discovered Urban Sketchers online, and I was so excited because uh, Urban Sketchers, it was all about the sketch. The sketch, that was what it was, you know, that was yeah. the, that was what you shared. You shared your sketch, and I thought, wow, this is amazing. So I started looking at all the sketchers online, and then I met uh, somebody who was part of the Urban Sketchers group who lived in my city, whose name ah. is Mark Tara Holmes. And in Montreal, and, right? And in Montreal, yes. And we started sketching together. And he was very instrumental because he said, well, I looked at your blog and your sketches are nice, but you don't write. And Urban Sketchers is also about sharing, uh, you know, your, about your, the location, mm -hmm. about writing as well. So I started writing on my blog. And um, so that's how I discovered it. And I went to my first symposium in 2012 in Santo Domingo in the Dominican mm -hmm. Republic. And then the following year, um, I applied to be an instructor. So I was an instructor in Barcelona and uh, then uh, in Singapore and Manchester and Porto and Amsterdam. And so that's why you came to Portugal. That's right. I was Aha. teaching there. Yes, I was teaching at the symposium. And, um, you know, I have to say that Urban Sketchers changed my life. Wow. I've met so many amazing people. Um, and we've become really great, great friends because we share a love of sketching and we, we meet every year, not this year, of course, but, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we meet every year and it's a bit like a, like a, a reunion of college, uh, like a college reunion, you know, we know each other and we share our sketches and we just sketch together and it's like, uh, it's just an amazing group. You know, it... I think this is beautiful and it's just the rent alarm. It's like there's so much to gain and to explore when we are willing to take a risk. You know, you discovered Urban Sketchers and you reached out and you talked to people and now it's a big part of your life. It shaped a That's lot of right. your life. That's I, right. I got like, I got super involved with the art community when I first started to learn a digital painting back when my husband and I wanted to make a game, which by the way, we never made that game, but it was a catalyst for me being in here, here today. So yeah, I mean, there are so many of us artists who are so introverted and reaching out is just so hard, hard. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, well, well the, the, the first place that I found um, Urban Sketchers um, community was on Flickr at the time and this was oh. before instagram so on Flickr was a place where everybody shared their work and uh, there was the urban sketchers blog but that was limited to um, correspondence but then people would post in the urban sketchers group on Flickr, and that was such a supportive community you know um, and there's there's just an element of real uh, appreciation for others work no matter what the skill level Mm -hmm. So you post your work, you're putting yourself out there by sharing your work and, uh, and people say, wow, this is amazing, you know? So that's how I met my first Urban Sketchers people through Flickr. And I'm glad you're saying that because I, I think that's the, the hard part of reaching out is putting yourself out there and showing your work and being vulnerable because there's, there's yeah. a certain level of vulnerability. I was able to say the word. Uh, yes, to, that's you, Right? I got it. There's a certain level of it. Not trying it again. Uh, got my yeah. look already. Uh, there's a certain yeah. level again of vulnerability that it, it's required of us to be so vulnerable to get our art out there. Into it's like we're showing part of ourselves. It's so personal. We you are. Know? So we are. how? And you just said that you were able to because it was a very positive community. I'm sure that helped with that first stage, but do you have any tips or any advice on other about about that or how can other artists just get out of their shells and their comfort zone and reach out and start something? 
Uh, well, again, if people are sketch um, within the boundaries of urban sketchers, which is, uh, you know, sharing, if you look at the manifesto of mm -hmm. urban sketchers, it's, you know, draw on location, put your, put your sketches in context, uh, mm -hmm. including now when people can't get out much, but don't just draw your cat, but draw your cat in the room. Or, uh, you know, if you're outside and you're drawing your backyard, don't just draw a plant, but put a plant in context. I mean, now people are limited because of COVID and they can't get out much. So if you want to start somewhere and you draw within those boundaries, the, any of the Urban Sketchers channels are fantastic because, um, you know, you can post in the Facebook group or, uh, you know, hashtag on, uh, uh, on Instagram and they are so supportive so that is a, a one first thing is is don't be afraid to post there mm -hmm. um and um you know i i think also a way to get yourself into it is to just follow along a, a bit in a voyeuristic way first if you're afraid in other mm -hmm. words just watch and comment without posting your own work Good tip and then start posting your own. So become known as someone who, who uh, you know, l read what other people say about other people's work. That also helps you. Read what people say about their own work. So post your work and say, I did this uh, and I did it here. And, and the other thing that I find that's really interesting is don't af be afraid to be honest about what you did. Oh. Um, and I think being genuine and being honest uh, about anything about your own artwork uh, on social media is also uh, is also really helpful because not every day is a good day. Not everything we draw is great or is our best, but just be honest about, you know, I had trouble and I didn't know how to do this. And sometimes people are very helpful and they will say, they'll give you tips if you want. Or you, or if you don't want, you can just say like it wasn't the greatest day, but I'm, but even the process of drawing was beneficial to me. Yeah. So I think I think just being yourself is is the best way. But like I said, f watch and listen to what other people do, and that that's always helpful to me. I've learned mm -hmm. so much from just reading what other people say about their own work. Beautiful. Yeah, and this is applyable to the Urban Sketchers community, the Etrick community, and the online school community. So yeah, what you said exactly. is golden. Seek a community yeah. that you love. Check how they speak yeah. to each other. If it's healthy, if it's positive, if you like it, then try exactly. to engage at your own time. Because a lot of great things can come out of just reaching out. And uh, yeah, it's so important. Oh, I yeah. love this rent. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. Um <laughs> What would you consider, so you've, you've been doing a lot, so far, what have been the hardest challenges for you to overcome art-wise? Uh, the hardest challenges, I guess, are, um, well, finding the time. I mean, I mentioned that already, but, uh, you know, making the time is so important, and I, I think... Uh, you know, for me, if I don't draw every day or every second day, I feel really rusty. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess, you know, making my family and friends aware that this is something that I have to do. I'm very lucky. I have a supp really supportive family and friends. Um, but to me, it, it's really the time is finding the time is always the hardest thing. Um, and uh you know and i i guess also pushing myself to learn new things mm -hmm. uh not staying stuck in the same patterns i'm always looking at what other artists do how do you uh, yeah okay great looking yeah, at what other no, people I, do what else how do you how do you shake things up um i change materials huh. a lot so i'll you know if i'm used to working in watercolor i'll try gouache i'll Late, lately, I've tried casein, which is what, what James Gurney uses. I know you mm -hmm. did an interview with him, and I'm a huge fan of his work. He's so, so he layers. Oh, he's he's such a nice precious. man. Precious. 
He's adorable. very, the very, very, very generous. Very, yeah, very that's generous. the word. If there was one word for James Gurney, it would be generous and kind. He's yes, amazing. And kind. So and I've generous. painted with him. I've painted Aww. with him before, and he's yeah, he's really amazing. Um, so, uh, so you know, I, I, I read. I have a lot of art books. I read magazines. I watch stuff on YouTube. Um, and I'm just always constantly trying to learn from other artists. So that, to me, is really, really important. Even if the results are bad, it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter. Um, sometimes I go back to working in monochrome. I take color out of the picture, and I just go back to working in monochrome. I work in ink. I work in, in, uh, in pencil and in charcoal. And But, uh, oh, the other thing that I find that really helps, too, is going to life drawing. And that's mm. that's been difficult lately because, you know, there's COVID. no life drawing classes, COVID. Oh. Uh, so, you know, we do it on Zoom, but it's not that it's not that great on yeah, Zoom. Yeah, because you, you the lose camera, the, it's, the depth. It's flat. Yeah. The depth. It's flat. The yeah. models are flat. But if there was, I would say one thing that helps me the most in my drawing, it's to draw from, uh, to go to life drawing classes. Yeah. Um, and a friend of mine said this, and it's so true. If you draw the model, your drawing, all your drawing gets better. Like if you do life drawing, everything else will get better. Why and do it's you true. think, why do you think that that's a thing? Why, why does that happen? <sighs> Because uh, uh, I think the model is one of the hardest things to draw. And mm -hmm. I think when you're drawing from the model, you're constantly measuring vertical and horizontal. And you're, uh, it's all about relationships within the body. Mm -hmm. So I think that if you extrapolate and you take that to looking, for example, at a scene around you, it really helps you also do that same kind of measuring. Um, and that is, that's really important. Um, also because... Uh, a body has life and volume and if you can again take that and bring that out into the world yeah. uh, it's a lot of yeah. things right because we have proportion we have composition we have the volume we have the lighting there's just so much that we don't even realize how much we're practicing exactly and the and the other thing is it's and so important that i always tell my students is um, draw from life and I don't mean from the live model but just it's a lot more beneficial to draw uh, you know the glass that's in front of you rather than a photo of the glass exactly so draw, draw from observation not from exactly. photos and just for context for those of um, of our listeners who do not know what we mean when we say the image is flat so when we see something in real life our eyes uh, perceive it differently than if we're looking at a picture because a camera after taking a picture a camera or a webcam or whatever it uh the it flattens out the image so it can produce the virtual exactly. image of it while our minds when looking at it live are processing a lot of other information and once exactly. you look at a picture we cannot process it because it's already flat so that's exactly. what we mean by exactly and the other thing that the camera does is it it the end result the photo has taken away a lot of the details yeah. that our eyes see so for example if you're looking at a photo in a shadow area it might be completely dark with no detail whereas if you're looking at it in real life you may see many of many things in that shadow mm -hmm. that because our eyes put keep on your... adapting to the light all the time constantly right yeah exactly so that's right. yeah so that's the other that's the other thing is to draw from light i love it uh, yeah any last words to leave our audience before we wrap up the interview uh just keep sketching uh you know uh i'm i'm a fan of etcher i have to say since i discovered my etcher books Thank um you. and it's been uh nine years that i've been looking for the right book oh wow and i yeah long time took for me to find a watercolor sketchbook that Which is ones? actually well i i was for uh many months uh using my white and now etcher i sketchbook. have at your sketchbook and now i have my perfect sketch so yeah. my perfect um and i have to say the best watercolor paper um, ever in any sketchbook. 
So thank, thank you. you guys wow. for that because you are yeah. welcome. I'm so oh my it was god, a, you just made my day. It was a long search, a very long search, uh, nine years. Thank uh, you to f to find the book. So uh, can thank I you. ask? I, I, you, uh, you didn't pay. You didn't pay me for that. But no, no. It's like I, I don't even I, ever. I, thank you. I never I ask questions about our products, but since you brought it up, can I can I ask what makes the sketchbook so good for you personally? Uh, because you can actually do in the books what you do in a watercolor paper. So there's enough texture to get granulation with paint. Uh, the paper is gorgeous on both sides. It doesn't warp in the book. Uh, it's, um, you know, I believe me, I've, I've tested them. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, there's enough that you can get dry brush texture. It's actually, I mean, the only thing, the closest thing that I ever found was cutting up sheets of watercolor paper and taking them to my art supply store, my, my uh, office supply, and having them bound. And there's nothing, and I don't feel like doing that. I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want to waste time. I want to, besides, I want a hardbound book and I can't get a hardcover. So I have to say that it's the first time in all this time. And I've maybe gone through like 40 sketchbooks of other brands and I haven't found one. So, uh, thank so thank yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. I'm so happy. Uh, <laughs> for, for our you... listeners, uh, Sherry showed the books in our video that is on YouTube. If you're listening to the audio version only, you can find the books if you go to our at your lab .com website under the sketchbook category. Sherry was referring to the perfect sketchbook. Uh, there's an A4 and A5, pick whatever size you like best. And she was also mentioning the Etra sketchbooks, our, our uh, mo more affordable range. Those are the ones with the white cover and uh, texture right. so I mean you, you were mentioning all the cold press right because of right I use cold press yeah I use cold press so uh, both of those books are fabulous and so yeah thank you That's, and if uh, you'd like you to see guys. more <laughs> if you'd like to see more of uh, Sherry's work she is one of our artists for the book that we are hopefully launching soon there's a lot yes. of beautiful on location paintings of Montreal Yes, very honored to be in the book. Thank you. Uh, wow. It's a it, it's a wonderful book. So thank you. I'm I'm happy you. for that. And thank you for interviewing me today. So nice oh, so to meet fun. you. I I needed so, this. So fun you to have talk. Beautiful energy. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't Sherry just amazing? If you'd like to learn gouache from her, please join us for a free live demo on October twenty third at 4 p.m. Los Angeles time, that's 10 a.m. Sydney time. We will explore highlights and reflections in this medium. You can find the link for that and everything else that we mentioned in this episode at etcherlab.com forward slash Sherry. That's E-T-C-H-R-L-A-B.com forward slash S-H-A-R-I. Like the podcast? Help us support the show by subscribing and giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts at etcherlab.com forward slash go forward slash Apple. See you in the next episode and until then, let's make more art. Thank you. Good morning. Bonjour. Na, 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 na.